A long time ago, in a studio pretty far away, a movie empire was created. The studio was called L Street, north of London, and there, 40 years ago, a cast of unheralded actors came together to make film history. Some, like Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher, became household names, but others had their faces obscured by alien masks or menacing helmets. We're talking about Star Wars, of course, and a new documentary called Elstree 1976 that unmasks some of the actors who brought the Star Wars galaxy to life. Joining us now are the film's director, John Spira, and Anthony Forrest, who played one of the most memorable stormtroopers in the saga. Good morning to you both. Good morning. John, let me start with you. What made you want to make this film? Uh, I, I was teaching about 10 years ago, and one of my students told me his secret, which was that he had appeared in Star Wars. And that kind of intrigued me. And he took me out to his car, and it was full, the, the back of the car was full of boxes of 8x10 photographs. <laughs> and he told me that he travels the world signing these, these autographs. And I found out that he was, uh, in the film, you can only see the back of his head yeah. for about, you know, five seconds or something. And yet this has become his life. And that was kind of my doorway into this, this world and this community. So, Well, Anthony, yeah. now that we've taken your mask off, who is the character that you play that people know you as? It's, uh, it's the Stormtrooper, storm or as it became also known as the Sand Trooper. And the sand tro this particular Sand Trooper is the one who runs that, that troop of Sand Troopers, and he does the Jedi mind trick scene with Obi-Wan Kenobi. You couldn't have known. I mean, there's no way anyone no, could have known no, at the time. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was one of those moments that you, that, uh, you know, uh, Alex Guinness was wonderful to work with. We're a small crew in Tunisia, and this was quite early on in the beginning of the filming. Yeah. You had you ended up having one of the most memorable lines in the whole Star Wars saga, right. um, and and uh, it's been used in other TV shows as well. Subsequently, it's become very big. Let's take a look. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Excuse me, stormtrooper. These are the droids you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think when you see that now? It's, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's magical in a way to know that you've done something that's kind of gone that far. Yeah. Was it ever frustrating though because nobody knew it was you? Um, no, it's, it's interesting. I was there to play the Fixer, which was a friend of Luke Skywalker's. And Fixer ran Toshi Station. And those scenes were cut from the film. They weren't used in the final film. And really, George had asked me, he said to me, I was at the hotel, they drove me out to, he, they said, they, George wants to see you on the set, so they drove me out to the set. George was walking to the car with a script, and he was looking anxious, and he said, can you do me a favor and play this scene with Alec Guinness? Nobody's going to know you're going to be, in, have the Stormtrooper costume on, you're going to be in a helmet, and it won't affect the Fixter character. So I said, yeah, let's do it. And we did, yeah. John, you interviewed 10 of these actors who, who we don't actually really know um, from the film. Well, if there was a common thread with people like Anthony and the others, what, what was it? I think the common thread was the actual experience that they had. Uh, the point of the film is it's looking at kind of how it affects, how, how being associated with such a pop culture phenomenon yeah. has affected normal people's lives. So the thread that they have in common is that in the summer of 1976 in Northwest London, they were at this studio, they were all there for a number of days on a film which they thought would be insignificant. And 40 years later, they find out that really their lives have, to, to some degree, been shaped by that. You know, the way they see themselves, in some cases, has been shaped by that. Right. And just the association just continues to, to resonate for many Fans years. Fans must go nuts to both of you, because I'm sure they always wondered who these people were, and I'm sure to know that it was you. Yeah, it is, it is interesting. It's, it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's, it's fascinating because now I'm, I'm potentially meeting four generations. Right. Which is, you know, it's... One quick last thing. I, you've made a point, though, for years of not telling people you were in Star Wars. Why? Um, it just... I, I, I work as a, as a musician. I write songs and, and I write scripts and that. And I just didn't want that necessarily to weigh on the other things that you do. You mm -hmm. see, you know, it's, it's, you kind of want... The, each work, I feel, should stand on its own. Right. right. But you're proud of it now. Yeah, I'm all, yeah I am. I have been proud of it, and it's always been proud of, of, of seeing something. You know, it's, it's had enormous effect on communities. Yeah. It's very interesting because there's so many people uh, across the country in that that actually dress up in, the, in costumes and that, and they do charity events and they raise enormous amounts of money for charities. Yeah. So it's great to actually see that kind of that what is happening with that and how it's 
it's working its way back into the communities. Does that still fit, Anthony? Well, it, it well, it's interesting. You can't just put them on. You have to put them on sideways. Yeah, I'm totally yeah. putting that on in the commercial. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, Andy Forrest, John Spira, thank you both very much, and good luck with the film. Elstree 1976 is playing in select theaters and is now available on video on demand.